Welcome to the Harris County Flood Control District's virtual community engagement meeting to discuss Q128 Ad Long Ditch Preliminary Engineering Report. This virtual community meeting is being offered by the Flood Control District to share vital information with the community. My name is Shelter Brigham and I'm with the Flood Control District's communications team. I'm joined tonight by a team of Flood Control District leadership and subject matter experts to ensure we continue to keep you up to date on these important flood mitigation projects in your community. We're also joined by staff from area elected officials, offices, and community associations. We're glad to see the community so engaged in these projects, and we look forward to continuing to share updates and keeping all of you in the community involved. First, we would like to begin tonight's meeting with remarks from Harris County Precinct 3 Commissioner Tom Ramsey. Howdy, and thank you all for joining us this evening. I know you're here to talk about the Adlong Ditch Project, but first, I want to welcome you to Precinct 3. The new precinct now spans from the Memorial Villages in the west, Tom Ball and Huffman to the north, and Crosby and Barrett to the east. Precinct 3 is responsible for 40% of all unincorporated Harris County roadways, 68 parks, and 10 nature and community centers. Although our jurisdiction is widely spread out, Precinct 3 remains committed to serving you. With summer fast approaching, we are offering summer camps for children. We also have a movie night at Crosby Park happening on Saturday, June the 11th. Looking for more, Precinct 3 proudly plans bus trips for seniors, as well as a park programs for anyone who loves the outdoors. More information on these programs can be found at PC. T3.com or on our Facebook, Twitter, Nextdoor, and Instagram account. Another commitment we have to you is maintaining your roads, bridges, parks, and drainage with the highest standards. To submit a service request, please call us at 713-274-3100. Again, that's 713-274-3100. Thank you for joining us this evening. Your time and feedback are crucial to ensuring we do our best in serving you. And thank you, Commissioner Ramsey. We appreciate you joining us for tonight's meeting. This virtual public meeting will begin with a presentation to share project updates, including discussing the potential plans, the project timeline, and next steps for flood reduction along the Q128-000 tributary, which we will be referring to as Ad Long Ditch. The presentation will be followed by a virtual question and answer session with flood control district team members. Attendees will be able to submit comments and questions through the website as well as by phone. And any comments not addressed during the Q&A session will receive a response from the flood control district after the event. Instructions on how you can participate in this virtual open house are included on this slide. They're on the virtual meeting webpage and they're also on the flood control district's website. And I will share a reminder of these instructions when we get to the Q&A portion of tonight's meeting. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and will be placed on the Flood Control District's YouTube channel in the next few days. And all meeting materials will also be made available for download and that will be on the Flood Control District's website. We will now transition to Craig Moss, Cedar Bayou Bond Implementation Program Technical Advisor with the Flood Control District He's going to share more information about the Flood Control District and then more about this specific project. Craig, over to you. Thank you, Sheldra, and a special thanks to each of you for joining us. <clears throat> In this presentation, we'll give a brief overview of this project. Before we get to the project specifics, though, we want to share some information about the Flood Control District. The Harris County Flood Control District is a special purpose district created by the Texas legislature in 1937 in response to the devastating floods in 1929 and 1935. The Flood Control District was created to serve as a local partner to leverage federal funding for flood damage reduction projects. Our mission has expanded greatly over the past 80 years with billions of dollars in infrastructure improvements in the ground. While we are a separate entity from Harris County, the Harris County Commissioner's Court serves as our governing body. The mission of the Flood Control District is to provide flood damage reduction projects that work with appropriate regard for community and natural values. 
One of the most difficult challenges we face is constructing effective projects that are sensitive to community and natural values in a highly urbanized area. Harris County includes 23 main watersheds, totaling approximately 1,800 square miles and more than 2,500 linear miles of channels. That's approximately the distance from New York to California. Each watershed has its own unique characteristics and needs. Tonight, we're talking about a project in the Cedar Bayou watershed of East Harris County, specifically improvements in the tributary Q128 sub watershed, otherwise known as Adlong Ditch. So why is Harris County flood prone? Some of the reasons that the county is, uh, are that the county is uh, prone to extreme rainfall, including tropical storms and hurricanes. We have a flat, slow draining landscape, and we have clay soils that do not soak, soak up the excess rainfall quickly or sometimes even at all. These flooding issues become more apparent when combined with the dense population centers and the development that has occurred in our region. While the Flood Control District plays a critical role in flood risk reduction, we are one of several entities involved in these efforts in our region. The Flood Control District works with other agencies and shares jurisdiction over flooding issues in Harris County. This slide illustrates shared jurisdiction. Inside neighborhoods, as shown on the left side of the illustration, storm sewers and roadside ditches collect stormwater runoff and start the process of moving it away from streets and homes. Storm sewers and roadside ditches are the responsibility of the underlying municipality and in unincorporated parts of the county, Harris County Engineering. The larger bayous and channels that take the collected stormwater and move it through our drainage system to Galveston Bay are the responsibility of the flood control district. This is shown on the right side of the illustration. In between these two systems, the stormwater detention basin is sometimes constructed by the flood control district. When storm sewers on the left are increased, this creates an increase in runoff. So it is, since it's our policy to avoid any adverse impacts from our projects, detention, detention basins help to safely take in and temporarily, temporarily store excess water during those heavy rainfall events. Often we partner with the Harris County precincts, utility districts and others to add recreational amenities such as trails to the basins and along our channels. On August 25th, 2018, Harris County voters approved two and a half million in bonds for flood risk reduction projects. This vote followed a series of meetings across Harris County in each watershed, which resulted in a list of what is now 181 bond projects. As of August 25th, 2021, every project included in the 2018 bond program has been initiated, including eight projects in the Cedar Bayou watershed. A total of more than $1.35 billion in partnership funding has also been secured so far to stretch the 2018 bond program even farther. The actual timing of each individual project will depend on a variety of factors, including environmental permitting, right-of-way acquisition, utility relocation, and in some cases, requirements of a particular grant. That said, project lists and projected schedules are updated regularly on our website. So while the bond was for $2.5 billion, the full cost of every project in the bond tables is almost $5 billion. So we made it clear from the beginning uh, that we would need funding partners to fully construct the projects in the bond program. As I mentioned before, we have had some success so far, having secured more than $1.35 billion in partner funds. And, as, and this graphic illustrates the many sources of those partnerships, including federal, state, and local funding that the Flood Control District is working to secure for Harris County. Each agency has its own definition of eligible projects and its own requirements for local match funding, so the Flood Control District works diligently to match projects to the right partnership opportunities. So with that in mind, let's move into the parts of the program that specifically is about the channel conveyance improvements for Adlong Ditch, our project. So here we have a map of the Cedar Bayou watershed. A watershed is defined as all of the areas that contributes drainage to the main channel, which in this case is Cedar Bayou. The Cedar Bayou watershed is the easternmost watershed in Harris County and Cedar Bayou generally serves as the border for Harris County with Chambers and Liberty counties. Cities of Baytown and Mont Bellevue are located within the watershed, 
which encompasses nearly 200 square miles. Cedar Bayou flows in a southward direction from its headwaters in Liberty County to its mouth at Galveston Bay. And there are about 128 miles of open streams within the watershed, including the primary channel and the tributary channels. The main stem of Cedar Bayou is approximately 40 miles in length and directly impacts Harris County, Chambers County, and Liberty County. So before we get into the details of this project, I want to take a, two, a few minutes to share some background information. In 2018, the Flood Control District completed the Cedar Bayou Flood Risk Reduction Study. This planning study investigated the existing flood risks within the watershed and identified potential future drainage improvements aimed at mitigating these flood risks. Out of this study, Q128-00-00 tributary, also known as Adlong Ditch, was identified as a priority sub-watershed and selected to be included in the 2018 bond program. So this brings us to where we are today in the channel conveyance improvements at Adlong Ditch project. As you can see on this slide, Adlong Ditch is located in the upper third of the Cedar Bayou watershed. Looking at the inset on the left, you will find the limits of the Adlong Ditch watershed, sub-watershed. Adlong Ditch sits just west of Cedar Bayou main stem and is located between its confluence with Cedar Bayou and its upper limit at Ramsey Road. In addition, Highway 90 runs northwest through the middle of this watershed. The Adlong Ditch subwatershed is approximately 11 square miles in area with six miles of drainage channels conveying stormwater into the Cedar Bayou tributary. The preliminary engineering report or PER that we are discussing this evening focuses on drainage improvements along Adlong Ditch from the confluence of Cedar Bayou upstream to Highway 90. This area is shown within the red box. As with much of our region, the subwatershed has a history of storm events that produce heavy rains and cause frequent flooding. This illustration represents the typical lifestyle of a flood control district flood reduction project. As you can see, the flood risk reduction study was the first stage of the project life cycle. Currently, we are finalizing the preliminary engineering stage or PER. After completion of the PER, we will remove into the right-of-way acquisition and design stages of the project life cycle. Completion of these stages will lead us into construction and ultimately to the operations and maintenance of the implemented improvements. So the purpose of the PER stage is to focus on identifying and evaluating possible alternatives to reduce flood risks within the Adlong Ditch project area. There are several criteria in mind as we evaluate possible alternatives, with the most important being hydraulic and drainage benefits provided to the project area, such as reducing flood risks and mitigating for any increases in flows downstream. The objective of the PER stage is to perform a detailed analysis of potential channel conveyance stormwater detention alternatives within the project area, to identify right of way necessary so that the project can be implemented and we can maintain it and to identify and minimize project constraints such as utility relocations and environmental impacts. At the end of the PER stage, a preliminary engineering, engineering report will be prepared that provides a recommendation to, that will move into design and construction. Before we get into the details of the project though, I wanna take a few minutes to cover some of the terms that we will be using. Some of you, uh, these you, you have probably heard, but I think it's beneficial to clarify some of the terminology. Throughout this presentation, we will be using terms like 100 year, 10 year, et cetera. So a 1% so a annual chance event is also called a 100 year event, meaning that there is a rainfall event that has a 1% chance of occurring in any given year. This does not mean that if you have a 1% event chance today, you are safe for another 100 years. It is simply a measure of the expected frequency based on the historical data that we have. By the same token, a 10% chance or 10 year rainfall event is a, an event that has a 10% chance of occurring in any given year. A 50% or two year event has a 50% chance of occurring in any given year and a 0.2% annual chance event or a 500 year event follows the same convention. 
I think it's important to remind you that the precipitation depths for each of the specified frequencies are based on statistical data, and they're not related to each other. For instance, a 100-year storm does not have 10 times the rainfall uh, of a 10-year storm. So I'd like to also go over some flooding terms. A subwatershed is a subset of a larger watershed. We refer to areas that drain from a tributary into the main channel as a subwatershed. Adlong Ditch is a subwatershed of the larger Cedar Bayou watershed. Inundation mapping is used to identify the rising and spreading of water from the channel banks over the nearby ground, also called stream flooding. This is not necessarily the same thing though, as the FEMA regulatory floodplain, which is based on inundation mapping, but it also goes through a rigorous review and public input process to become a regulatory product for flood insurance purposes. You will also hear the term overflow. Overflow occurs when water levels are sufficiently high so that water overtops the drainage area divide and flows into an adjacent drainage area. I want to reiterate that this project uses inundation mapping to identify current flood risks and to gauge the effectiveness of the flood reduction project. So now that we've clarified some of the terms, let's talk about the existing drainage patterns in the Adlong Ditch subwatershed. As part of the PER, we performed a detailed evaluation of the existing drainage conditions along Adlong Ditch. Our investigation revealed several existing issues, such as first flow restrictions at Adlong School, Rid Adlong School Road bridge crossing, that result in raised flood elevations upstream. Also a shallow depth in the Adlong Ditch channel itself, which gives the channel very little capacity and limits the ability for outlying areas to drain to the channel. Low-lying areas also exist to the south and west along Adlong Ditch that are pr prone to flooding due to the flat terrain. And, and lastly, chronic flooding uh, of New Road occurs due to, to sheet flow issues and limited channel capacity and it partially due to the new road bridge crossing itself. So the Flood Control District has several flood risk reduction tools at its disposal, at our disposal, that can reduce flood damage throughout any given watershed. Tonight, we're focused on the following flood reduction strategies within our toolbox, channel conveyance improvements, road crossing improvements, and stormwater detention basins. When analyzing the flood risk reduction strategies, we looked at providing improvements ranging in system capacity from the 10% or 10-year event to the 4% or 25-year rainfall event. We will now each discuss each, each of these tools in more detail as they pertain to developing flood risk reduction projects within the Adlong Ditch project area. The first flood risk reduction tool I'll, I'll discuss is channel modifications within a watershed to improve channel conveyance. Channel modifications increase the size of the channel so that it can carry more stormwater. The team looked at a variety of channel modifications aimed at improving the flow capacity within Adlong Ditch and increasing the flow of stormwater away from areas that are prone to flooding. There are different ways to do this. They include widening and deepening, deepening the channel, uh, reducing the friction along the channel by removing heavy vegetated areas, or occasionally even adding concrete lining to the channel to make it slipperier. Road crossing improvements are another flood mitigation tool at our disposal. Oftentimes, support pillars of bridges or crossings, as well as the roads themselves, can restrict the flow of stormwater, which increases the risk of flooding upstream of the crossing. These improvements focus on replacing, raising, extending, or otherwise modifying crossings in order to remove restrictions to the flow. As you may recall when discussing the existing conditions, flooding exists upstream of the new road bridge crossing. During this preliminary engineering stage, we explored how improving the road crossing would address the flooding in these upstream areas. Stormwater detention basins are another structural flood mitigation method that creates volume specifically for the purpose of collecting and temporarily holding stormwater within a watershed. We're using stormwater detention in this project to, to mitigate the flow increases created by the channel improvements to add long ditch. Without stormwater detention, the improvements would otherwise have the potential to cause downstream flooding. For preliminary engineering, we looked at implementing stormwater detention basins in the lower and the middle and the upper regions of the project area. 
Now I'll discuss in further detail how the Flood Control District incorporates detention basins on our projects throughout Harris County. So a stormwater detention basin is built to temporarily store excess stormwater until it can make its way safely back into the channel and then ultimately out to Galveston Bay. There are several ways for stormwater to fill a detention basin, but it's important to note that all of our structures are passive designs. They use gravity to operate. So there are no mechanical gates or pumps that are needed to make the basin work. This illustration shows stormwater overflowing into a basin from a bayou by way of a weir structure. The weir serves as a designated location where stormwater rising in the channel can spill into the detention basin. Other detention basins have no weir and are simply open to a channel. In this case, stormwater fills the basin as it rises in the channel. Then as the water levels in the bayou recede, the stormwater from the basin drains by gravity through the outfall pipe and back into the channel. There are two main types of detention basins, which you'll see. Wet bottom detention basins and dry bottom detention basins. Both types of detention basins fill up and temporarily hold stormwater during a storm event. A wet bottom stormwater detention basin has a permanent pool of water, which helps with the aesthetics and water quality. The area above that wet bottom to up to the top of the basin is what is available for the additional stormwater storage. Then as, it names, as its name implies, a dry bottom stormwater detention basin features a dry basin bottom with a grassy lining does, that's designed to drain dry after each rainfall event. A dry bottom detention basin is what we are proposing for this project. Since we just touched on stormwater detention, I wanna give you an idea of how much detention is planned for the area. A standard football field is just about one acre in size. Now think of that football field covered with one foot of standing water. The volume of water is then one acre foot. The Adlong Ditch Project requires approximately 415 acre feet of detention. That is enough water to cover 415 football fields with one foot of water. Of course, our detention basins are typically at least three feet deep, so we can stack and spread out all those football fields within the available site that is chosen. So as you can see, the team looked at a variety of potential flood reduction options, which included a combination of channel modifications, road crossing improvements, and stormwater detention basins when exploring the ways to reduce the flood risk within the watershed. Based on the analysis of flood reduction performance and the other project considerations, the recommended improvements for the Adlong Ditch project include channel modifications to increase stormwater conveyance through the watershed, providing approximately 415 acre feet of detention to temporarily hold stormwater during rain events and constructing road crossing improvements at new road. More project details will be available at the completion of the PER and will be accessible to you through the project website. We will be reviewing the project schedule and project website location later in our conversation this evening. So by implementing these proposed flood risk reduction strategies, this project will provide the following benefits during a 1% annual chance or 100 year rainfall event. They, it will remove inundation from up to 26 structures, remove the inundation from up to 254 acres, and remove inundation from about 1.2 miles of roads within the project area. In addition, this project will reduce the flow of stormwater entering the Cedar Bayou main stem during heavy rainfall events. This will help to reduce the flood risks downstream of this watershed. Then as additional funding becomes available in the future, the current project can be expanded based on the recommendations that emerge and are included in the PER. So the next thing I'd like to touch on are, are the next steps. Where do we go from here? As I mentioned, we're currently in the preliminary engineering stage and finalizing the PER. In the near term, the PER will be completed and transmitted through Harris County Commissioner's Court. We anticipate the PER will be completed this summer. Upon completion of the PER, our team will begin initiating the required right-of-way acquisition and utility relocation. Once these activities are initiated, the Flood Control District will host an early design community engagement meeting to share more details about the proposed project. 
The final design stage includes the development of detailed construction drawings and specifications that will be used to actually construct the project. We currently anticipate the design stage to be completed in the summer of next year, 2023. Once the final design is completed, the team will initiate the environmental permitting necessary with the US Army Corps of Engineers to meet our regulatory requirements. And once those permits are obtained, construction of this project can begin. At this time, we anticipate that construction to begin in early 2024. With that, I would like to send it back to Sheldra to close out the presentation and take us into the Q&A portion of our meeting. Thank you, Craig. Before we move into the Q&A portion, I do want to share a quick reminder that we would love to hear from you on this and other projects that are moving forward across Harris County. To learn more about projects, to ask questions, and to sign up for our mailing list, please visit hcfcd.org forward slash F43. Now, as a reminder, there are several ways that you can submit a comment during tonight's meeting. You can submit a comment on this site in the box near the presentation live stream. You can submit a comment on the Flood Control District's website at hcfcd.org forward slash F43, or you can submit a comment via phone at 855-925-2801. You'll want to utilize the meeting code 4964. And if you are joining us via phone tonight, please press star three to leave a message. Additionally, I want to reiterate that any questions not addressed during tonight's Q&A will receive a response from the Flood Control District following the event. Information from this meeting and a recording of the live stream will be available on the Flood Control District's website, and you'll also be able to find that on our YouTube channel. Joining Craig for our Q&A session tonight are Dina Green, Planning Division Manager, and Shen He, Feasibility Studies Project Manager, who are overseeing efforts on these projects. And now it's time to take some of your questions. Our first question will be for Dina. Dina, can you provide us with specific details of the projects that you will be implementing in Ad Long Ditch? Uh, sure, well, right now we have some general concepts that we're able to share information about. As Craig touched on earlier in our presentation, um, for the projects along Ad Long Ditch, we're looking to implement those channel conveyance improvements. So what that means is making modifications to the channel so that we can carry more water in it, stormwater in it when it rains. But in order to do that, we'll also need to pair that with a stormwater detention basin so that we make sure we're not pushing more water on property downstream. So it's really coming up with recommendations to manage how we collect that stormwater and move it and store it safely in a designated location. And so that's uh, quite a bit of what we're working through right now in the preliminary engineering report and trying to put the final recommendations on that at this time. Thank you, Dina. Our next question is for Craig. How is this project determined? Thanks, Shelber. So this, the project, uh, the Adlong Ditch, the conveyance improvements for Adlong Ditch uh, was one of the projects that, were, uh, that was identified, at least the Adlong Ditch area, uh, during the Cedar Bayou Flood Risk Reduction Study. Uh, that study identified several priority areas uh, within the Cedar Bayou watershed for further study, and uh, the Adlong Ditch Project was one of those identified from, the, from that Cedar Bayou study. Thank you, Craig. Next question is for Dina, and Brian is asking, when will the work start on Adlong Ditch, and can we meet with Harris County in person? Okay, uh, sure. So um, Sheldra, there we go, that this project life cycle slide does a nice job of walking you through the steps um, that it takes to actually get a, a project identified, designed and constructed in the ground. So as you can see, we're nearing the end of the preliminary engineering phase of the project. Um, we plan to have that wrapped up later this summer. And then before we can actually move into design and construction, we will go through uh, an additional step of uh, property acquisition if we need it. 
as well as utility relocation. And when we're talking about utility relocations, those are usually uh, things like working with pipelines that might need to be uh, deepened or realigned a little bit. Uh, sometimes things like um, electrical issues or water water supply lines, uh, things of that nature. Usually, um, you know, utilities that the neighborhood is relying on that we really need to make sure we have a plan to modify those if there's a conflict with our project and make sure that there's no disruption in service to the neighborhood or others that are relying on those utilities. Um, and once we get moving with that, then we will go ahead and move into the design stage and construction stage. Um, following design, as you can see from the schedule we have on the screen here, um, we are anticipating that we could go into starting design for the project um, in early 2023. And then hopefully if all goes smoothly into construction for the project in 2024. And I see there's also a question about uh, having a uh, direct contact with the county. If that's something that you'd like to be and you have some additional um, questions beyond this, please put your contact information in the chat, how you submitted your question, and then we'll be able to reach out to you after the meeting and get in touch. Good information. Thank you, Dina. Um, we've received several questions about cleaning out Adlong Ditch. We will share those questions with our maintenance staff and then get back to those who have asked that question with more details. Moving on to our next question for Dina from Sue Fitzgerald. I understand the project is to help Peter Bayou, but is the goal going to alleviate uh, the local flooding on our streets? So th this project actually is uh, related to Q128 or Adlon Ditch, and it is a, a, a project meant to directly address flood risks along Adlon Ditch. So uh, we do have several projects in the Cedar Bayou watershed, and you may have heard more of the, about those. We've had other public meetings for some of the other tributaries that we've been evaluating, and we do have several projects that will be moving into preliminary engineering study for projects specifically along Cedar Bayou itself. But actually in the case of this project, it really is to reduce um, that flooding along Adlong Ditch. So the project should provide some benefits to the community um, directly along the channel itself. Thank you, Dina. Next question is for Shen. When will the recommended alternative be chosen? Yes, at this time, uh, we're still uh, under studying the other alternatives. So like including, we're looking for the channel improvement options and also uh, finding the proper uh, locations for the mitigation uh, with the detention basins. So it is still early to, uh, to know, but as my uh, colleagues uh, stated, the study will be wrapping up uh, later this summer. So by that time, we'll be um, reaching out back to provide more updates. Thank you, Shen. Next question is about property buyouts. That's for Craig. Will there be any property buyouts or land acquisitions as part of this project, Craig? Sure. At, at this point, as Shin just mentioned, we're uh, we're still working through the process of identifying the you know the layout of the proposed improvements, and so the 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 whole process is still sort of uh, up in the air at that point. But uh, as soon as the, that process has been finalized, the right of way that uh, that might be needed for these particular components of the project will be announced and. Um, and we will provide the, um, all, all of the property owners, certainly, and, and the public with that information as soon as, as soon as we've finalized it. Thank you, Craig. Next question is for Dina about property values. Uh, how, might, how might this proposed project impact property values in the area? The flood control district cannot predict how property values will change as a result of any of our potential projects. However, we know that property with a lower risk of flooding does have higher values, generally speaking, than properties with a higher risk of flooding. So lowering flood risks in Harris County generally increases the quality of life within Harris County. All right, thank you, Dina. And we're a little over the halfway mark. Do you wanna remind folks how you can get in touch with us tonight and ask a question or share a comment? There are three ways that you can do that. You can submit a comment on this site near the presentation live stream. You can submit a comment on the Flood Control District's website at hcfcd.org. 
forward slash F43. Or you can submit a comment via phone at 855-925-2801. If you submit a question by phone, you'll need to utilize the meeting code 4964 and then press star three to leave a message. Um, also, any questions that we're not able to get to tonight, we will address those questions following the close of the comment period. Um, the information from this meeting, as well as a recording of the live stream will be made available to you. We're going to put that on our website and it will also be on our YouTube channel. And now we'll get back to some of your questions. Next question is for Shin. Who is responsible for cleaning dirt off the roads when excavation is underway? So yes, when the project is under con constructions, uh, Per the contract, uh, clearly it is the responsibility of the construction contractor. So they will use practices to keep the dirt from the uh, site, from impacting the nearby roads and prevent uh, impacts to the stormwater qualities. And if there's any issues uh, be reported, uh, can find to the flood control uh, district services request center on the flood control website. Thank you, Shen. Next question is from Crystal Hernandez for Dina. All the, are all the improvements going to be south of Highway 90? At this time, I believe so. It's looking like our recommendations will be to the south of Highway 90, um, but that doesn't mean we won't have recommendations for additional projects later on upstream of, of 90 as well. Um, but right now we are working with the funding constraints of the funding that we have available from the 2018 bond project. And so we are limited in um, the scope of the projects we're able to offer at this time. Um, but that doesn't mean that we won't identify additional projects that we'd recommend to be included on future capital improvement programs along Adlong Ditch. Thank you, Dana. Next question is for Craig. What are the benefits of this project? And what is the purpose of this project? So next two questions for Craig. <laughs> well, I think the, uh, certainly the purpose uh, uh, of the project is to, uh, it, it goes back to the flood control mission to, to build flood damage reduction projects that work with an appropriate regard for community and natural values. And so, uh, first of all, we wanna make sure that, uh, that, there, that the project reduces the risk of flooding within the, within the project area. And uh, Telder has put up the the project, the specific project benefit slides. But these are the types of things that we uh, that we typically look at when we're looking at how a project would perform, uh, or or different alternatives are being compared within the within the analysis of uh, during the PER stage. So in this case specifically, the the project's going to uh, essentially make the risk of flooding uh, a, a smaller. Uh, for the project area for uh, removing up to 26 structures from the in, from inundation in a, in a 100 year or 1% annual chance event, remove inundation from up to 254 acres that today would be would be flooded or inundated during during that storm event uh, wouldn't be after the project was built, uh, as well as the roadways as we talked a little bit about the, the local road so about 1.2 miles of roadway. Uh, that might be impassable now would uh, uh, would be passable once the project was complete, and 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 it does benefit Cedar Bayou as well, which is helpful to downstream residents also. Thank you, Craig. Next question is for Dina. Will there be other uh, future meetings as the project continues? Um, it project continues its planning. Yes, we will have additional uh, meetings. Uh, when, as you see, it, again, our, our graphic here talking about the project life cycle. So we're ending PER and then we'll be going into design and construction. And we will host more um, outreach in the community as we progress through those different steps in the project life cycle. And I'd also like to mention, um, I believe we have a slide that gives a, a web address where you can go to learn more about the project and get updates as well from the Flood Control District's website. We keep this updated regularly. Um, it's a great resource, a great place to go and get updates on the project as well. You can sign up for updates there. And if you know there's some more questions or comments you have about the project that you just didn't think about tonight or things you'd like us to consider as we're 
moving forward with this, there's also um, a comment button on our website for the particular project. And well, for all of our projects, but you go to the project of interest and you can read the update on it, but you're also able to leave comments on that. Um, it is delivered to the project team and, and to our communications department as well. So it'll make it to the folks that are working on the project. Thank you, Dana. Absolutely a great way for folks to stay up to date on, on a particular project that they're following. Uh, next question is for Craig. If flooding is an issue in this area, why are there more homes and structures being built? Um, always a good question. And uh, I think there are lots of reasons why, and uh, a lot of them revolve around the fact that uh, that there's a, just a whole lot of development going on in Harris County uh, as a whole. And the, the flood control district, as well as uh, Harris County and, and local entities uh, can uh, uh, basically do, don't have the power to, to uh, prohibit lawful activities on, on private property with at least without compensating that property owner for such a thing. And so uh, we address that, the, the flooding and, and the types of development that occur within the county uh, through our regulatory process. So uh, properties that drain to a flood control district channel or detention basin uh, have specific criteria that they must meet. Uh, if they drain to a city's uh, storm sewer system or drainage system or a county system, then the city or the county also have uh, or have regulatory requirement that they must meet as well. And the underlying uh, or, the, or uh, the overarching consideration for all of that is that those properties as they develop cause no adverse impact to their neighbors and to downstream properties as well. And just as we talked about our projects that we build at the, at the flood control district, not, uh, not being designed to cause, you know, to move the flooding to some other part of, of the county, we, the mitigation and, uh, is required to ensure that that doesn't happen. So um, while, those, while homes and structures may be being, being built uh, throughout the county, uh, that's one of the responsibilities of all of your local government agencies to make sure they're doing that in a responsible manner. Thank you, Craig. Next question is for Shin and Linda is asking, is it possible to consider redesigning the culverts that cross under Adlong Johnston Road? Yeah, um, when we do the channel improvements, which typically we will widening and deepening the channel and when we across the road, uh, we will typically look into the, the resize of the culverts and, uh, and hoping to accommodate the uh, channel improvements. So they're likely, uh, when we looking at the channel improvements along that road, we will have a chance to redesign it. Thank you, Shen. Dina, Eddie Glover is asking, has a property been determined for the detention basin? Sure. Um, as we mentioned earlier, we're still analyzing and collecting some data for the preliminary engineering study. So we don't have those final recommendations completed at this time. Thank you, Dina. Let's see, going back to Shen for another question. What is the Cedar Bayou Flood Risk Reduction Study? So the Cedar Bayou, uh... Uh, sorry, the Cedar Bayou uh, Flood Risk Reduction Study, what we call the FRRS, is a planning study that was uh, completed back in 2018. And this study looked at the whole watersheds and it developed a very high level uh, flood reduction concepts for the mainstream and also the 18 tributary, which also including the Algeron uh, Channel. Thank you, Shen. Let's see, Dina, can you provide us with specific details of the project that you will be implementing along Adlong Ditch? Uh, so as we just mentioned that, that right now the flood control district is still analyzing and gathering data to come up with those final recommendations. Um, but we are working to look into various projects to reduce flooding along Adlong Ditch. Um, and to make sure that they will do so without negatively impacting the surrounding areas. Um, we are specifically looking at those channel conveyance improvements as well as stormwater detention that would be paired along with them. 
Um, when we do have the completed project analysis ready, we'll be giving an update afterwards. Thank you, Dana. Next question is for Craig. Uh, how does the flood control district approach safety concerns around stormwater detention basins? Okay, well, like other public areas like highways and bridges and, and uh, rivers and lakes, uh, you know, first of all, we depend on individuals to make good choices and, uh, you know, protect their children and, and avoid dangerous situations like crawling through culverts and things like that. Um, and, but uh, for these the sp specific features we're talking about here for detention basins and those kinds of things, uh, our most of our detention basins are actually excavated, uh, so they're the the all the volume is below ground, and so things like uh, dam failures or a levee or berms that are maybe constructed along a, a basin that would cause a safety hazard are typically not a not a feature that we uh, that we have to be concerned about because all of our all of our features are below ground. So it's you know part of it is having being part of a community and working together to make sure that uh, that people make good choices and but also designing our systems as as best we can to ensure that uh, that they're not uh, uh, obvious safety hazards themselves. Thank you, Craig. Let's see, Dana, this is a common question. Will this project eliminate flooding altogether? Okay, so. Uh, I will say that this, this project will help reduce flooding, but as those of you that live in the area know, we can get really intense, large rain events that come through the area. So, um, you know, I can say that there, there really is no project that would completely reduce the risk of flooding, but we can pursue projects that help, um, or I'm sorry, that would not completely eliminate the risk of flooding, but we can pursue projects that help reduce that risk of flooding so that um, make sure that, you know, when flooding does occur, it's not, as severe or as often and to definitely reduce that overall risk. Um, one of the things shelter too, I wanted to go back if I could for just a second when folks were asking about safety and our detention basins and how those get constructed. Um, one thing too that can be helpful to point out is that the Harris County Flood Control District does have a design manual that we follow. And so when we do go and construct those stormwater detention basins, you know, they're generally constructed with pretty gentle side slopes slopes that um, folks are able to walk up and down pretty readily. And then in those cases, when we have a wet bottom detention basin, as you can see in the picture here, there is a safety shelf that's located within kind of a shallow depth around the bottom of that permanent pool that you see. So definitely safety features are taken into consideration when those detention basins get designed and constructed. Thank you, Dana. It's a great way to explain that. Next question is for Shen. What does uh, what does system capacity mean? So the system capacity uh, means how the channel be able to carry the flows. Um, when we typically talking about, we're saying a hundred year level of service. Uh, that means this channel have the capacity to carry a hundred year storm events before it overflows its channel banks and begin to affect the nearby structures. Thank you, Shen. Uh, let's see, we are getting a lot of questions answered tonight, but uh, if after this meeting, you still wanna reach out, you have more questions, you can contact the flood control district at 346. 286 4000. You'll leave, uh, you can also leave a comment by clicking on the submit a comment button located on the project webpage that we mentioned earlier. That's probably going to be the easiest way to get your questions and comments to the folks that can get some answers for you. And we'll go to, let's see, our next question will be for Craig. Craig, what is meant by the term uh, 100 year floodplain? Well, the 100-year floodplain is a, a term we hear a lot, uh, it seems like, especially around the Houston-Harris County area. Uh, the 100-year floodplain or the 100-year flood is also can be called the base flood uh, because it's tied to a, a flood insurance uh, standard that was established many years ago uh, that determined that the 100-year flood was uh, was something that needed to be taken into consideration uh, you know, during 
uh, during development and during the uh, the, the the building of of, uh, of homes and in other areas. Uh, the but the the floodplain itself, the 100 year or the one percent floodplain, is an area of the land that has a one percent chance of being inundated or flooded by floodwaters uh, from our bayous, from our creeks, or, or other areas uh, in any given year. So uh, as, as we mentioned earlier in the discussion, uh, just because we may have had a, a hundred year flood uh, last year, doesn't mean we're good for the next 99 or hundred years. Uh, it, it, that, those types of events could happen uh, at any time. And it's a statistical, it's a statistical measure. Uh, but it is the regulatory standard used by the federal flood insurance program. And so by all, uh, the, all, all of the communities that participate in that program to administer the uh, floodplain management programs uh, and allow all of their uh, citizens constituents to obtain the federally subsidized uh, flood insurance uh, policies that, uh, that, that will help them uh, in, in, that op in the chance that they have a flood. Uh, if you want to do the math, if you do live in the in the hundred year floodplain uh, and you have a thirty year mortgage, you the statistically speaking, you have about a twenty six or let's just say a one in four chance of experiencing that one hundred year flood uh, during your the period of your mortgage, the thirty year uh, period there. Thank you, Craig. Next question is for Shen. Is the flood control district responsible for maintenance and upkeep of stormwater detention basins after they're complete? General uh, speaking, uh, yes. Uh, and just to clarify, the flood control were responsible for maintenance, uh, such as mowing, debris removal, and vegetation uh, maintenance within our properties. And, and usually we mow our majority of the channels and basins three times a year. And also there are some uh, cases where the local entities such as MUD or HOA, they choose to uh, enter into agreement with us where we will pay them for the three mowings. And then the entity takes the cost of our additional mowings as their uh, discretions. And if one a sponsor chooses to build or in maintenance of recreational uh, facilities like a trail parks and flood control on our flood control properties. A mowing is often a part of that conversation or, or interlocal agreements. And it, we can um, find more some procedures on our website about um, of our mowing schedules. Thank you, Shen. Yeah, there's an interactive map on our website. It's a really, really good tool to, to check out the mowing schedule. Next question is for Dina from Beth Bray. How many acres are needed for the detention basin? Sure. Uh, you know, as we mentioned earlier tonight, we are still working out the details for that final recommendation. So, uh, I don't have uh, recommendations at this point to be able to give you about specific um, sizes of what those potential convenience improvements in detention basin might be. You know, we mentioned we needed, as we see on the slide, about 415 acre feet of, of detention volume. But uh, at, at this point, I don't have a recommendation about the actual size of the property that we would need to be able to provide that volume. All right, thank you, Dina. Uh, let's see, we've got about seven more minutes um, and a lot of questions coming in. You still have a couple of more minutes to reach out to us. Again, three ways that you can do that. Uh, there's a comment box uh, near the presenta presentation live stream. You can also go on our website. Um, a lot of good tools to update you about the many projects that we have going on are available on our website. Um, or you can give us a call at 855-925. 2801, and you'll utilize that meeting code 4964. Um, don't forget to press star three and leave a message, and then we'll have someone uh, address your question uh, or your comment. And the next question will be for Craig. Uh, what does the term channel capacity mean? A channel capacity it, uh, means, I guess, very generally, the ability of a channel to carry a certain amount of water. And, and uh, we tend to measure that certain amount of, of, of stormwater, in this case, uh, 
by estimating um, how deep the channel will flow in uh, in these uh, storm events, as we talked about before, the the the, the fifty percent or the two year event, the ten percent or the ten year event, the one percent or hundred year event, uh, and by by using those kinds of events and comparing them along channels uh, throughout the county, we can get a relative comparison of of where our systems and, and the channels throughout the county ha have a relatively high capacity and can carry a lot of water, uh, which aren't too many of them, uh, and where the channels uh, have a lower capacity because of vegetation, because of just being shallow and and uh, and small, uh, or, or, and, or for other factors, and uh, which helps us in the project evaluation process and in prioritizing where we need to build our projects. Thank you, Craig. Dana, Linda is asking, is any of the Adlong Ditch floodway expected to be reduced or eliminated? Hi, uh, thanks, Sheldra. So while the project that we're pursuing is gonna help reduce flood risks along Adlong Ditch, um, at this point, I, I do not have information about reduction of the potential floodway. Uh, the floodway is really a FEMA designated um, characteristic that gets mapped, included in those uh, flood insurance rate maps that most folks are, are familiar with. And so right now we're going through a new remapping air effort across Harris County, uh, referred to as Map Next, And we are in the process of updating those flood insurance rate maps and the data associated with it for all of the channels within Harris County, including the Cedar Bayou watershed. Uh, there will be updated floodway information included in the map next data that gets released. Um, so this, this project itself will definitely help reduce flood risks along Adlon Ditch, but um, at, at this point in time, it, uh, we're not intending for this to be a project that will um, be used to reduce the actual uh, FEMA effective floodway within the study area. Now, as we move farther in and wrap up design and move into construction, that's something we can consider once those map next models and uh, mapping data is released, then to go back and, and um, check it and plug in the data that we have available for this project and uh, look into going and, and making recommendations to make those changes at a later date but that's not right now included in our preliminary engineering analysis and likely won't be something that we would consider during this design stage as well. We really will need to have that data available to go back and look at it along with the recommendations that come out of this project. Thank you, Dana. Uh, Shen, Crystal is asking, will this project bring sidewalks to the community? Uh, thanks for the question. So as a flood control, we, the projects we build is for the purpose to you know, uh, reduce the flood risk for the neighborhoods. And usually we are willing to work with the precinct to consider if there's any recreational and, uh, entities wants to build later. Uh, we sometimes will work with the precinct and local entities to uh, design or uh, reserve some space for like park and trails later. But for our project's purpose, uh, for control, we don't build um, those recreational amenities. Thank you, Shen. Uh, next question is for Craig. And if you are reducing flood risks in the, in the area, in this area, are you just flooding another area as a result? That's a good question, and sometimes um, that is a is a condition that can happen if if uh, projects are not designed and evaluated carefully. Uh, as all these things go, the the water has to go somewhere, and so in many cases, uh, if you think about making a channel bigger, deeper, and wider, uh, what you're going to allow is for a, a lot more stormwater to be conveyed through that channel. Uh, and onto downstream, uh, on, on, potentially onto downstream properties. And so it's one of the things as we'd mentioned as we went through the, the, the discussion about the district's no adverse impact policy, which means that we need to, we have to evaluate all of our projects to ensure that we don't do that. And uh, one of the primary 
uses of stormwater detention, uh, stormwater detention basins is to ensure that that doesn't happen. So many times when you see a Harris County flood control district project, in fact, probably most times, that includes a channel conveyance or a deepening and widening of the channel improvement, you will also see a, a stormwater detention basin that's essentially dedicated to that project to make sure that the flows do not increase downstream once that project's been completed. All right, thank you, Craig. And with that, I'd like to share one final reminder that we are continuing to accept comments and feedback on this project through Wednesday, June 8th. Um, we also encourage everyone to get flood insurance as flood season in Harris County runs year round. Uh, thank you to Craig, Dina, and Shin for your answers and insight on this project. And thank all of you at home for joining us this evening and for all of your engagement on this project. We look forward to continuing to share updates as our work moves forward. Stay safe and have a great evening.